Welcome to our channel. Civil Engineering Basics. For more videos please subscribe, Civil Engineering Basics. Hello friends in this video lecture we will discuss about the types of foundations used in building construction. Let's start. Let's discuss, what is foundation of building and what are the functions of foundation. Foundation is the lowest part of building structure, and foundation is rested on the ground. The function of any foundation is to safely sustain and transmit the combined dead load, live load, and wind load, to the ground without causing damage to any part of building. You can see the diagram shown in for foundation and the load transmission by foundation to the ground soil. Now let's discuss the types of foundations. A wide variety of concrete foundations are used for buildings. Some of the most common types of foundations are spread footing, combined footing, strap footing, mat footing or raft footing, these are shallow foundations. Pile foundation, pier foundation, are deep foundations. Let's discuss. The spread foundation. Spread wall footings for wall is having a plane or reinforced slab wider than the wall, extending the length of the wall is called wall footing, see figure, A, for spread wall footing. Individual column spread footings are of simple type, step type, or slope two-way concrete slabs type, which are square or rectangular in plan. See the figure. B to D, for individual column spread footing. You can easily understand this type of foundation by seeing the diagrams given here. Let's discuss combined footing. Combined footing is constructed when two or more columns are closed together. See the diagram for the combined footing given here. The general shape of a combined footing is either rectangular or trapezoidal in plan. When two columns are equally loaded and closed together then combined rectangular footing can be provided. For different load conditions trapezoidal combined footing is provided when one column having different load than second column then trapezoidal combined footing is provided. Now let's discuss strap footing. When two or more columns are closed together and footings are connected by a beam then, it is called strap footing. You can easily visualize the strap footing by seeing the diagram given in here. The strap footing is more economical when a combined footing spacing is larger and it is causing a large bending moments in the combined footing. Now, let's discuss mat foundation or raft foundation. Mat foundation is consist of two-way slab under the whole structure. See the diagram for visualization of mat footing. When heavy loads are imposed to structure and soil capacity is lower relatively than a raft foundation or mat foundation is more economical to use. Let's discuss pile foundation. Pile foundation is only used when the sufficient soil strength is only available at the lower levels of ground. Building loads can be transferred to piles by a thick reinforced concrete slab, called a pile cap footing. Pile foundation is suitable when soil is compressible or waterlogged. Pile foundation is most suitable for bridges. You can see the general diagram for pile foundation given in here. Let's discuss pier foundation. Pier foundation is only used when the sufficient soil strength is only available at the lower levels of ground. Pier foundation consists of hollow vertical shaft and it is driven up to hard rock, hollow portion is filled with concrete. You can easily see the diagram of pier foundation and visualize the construction of pier foundation. Under favorable conditions, 
pier shafts 12 feet in diameter and larger can be constructed economically to depths of 100 feet and more. Subsoil movement and its effect on foundation and structure. It is very important point for foundation. Subsoil beneath foundation is compressed and reacts by exerting an upward pressure to resist foundation loading. If foundation load exceeds maximum passive pressure of ground, i.e. bearing capacity, a downward movement of the foundation could occur. Remedy is to increase plan size of foundation to reduce the load per unit area or alternatively reduce the loadings being carried by the foundations. Subsoil movements are due primarily to changes in volume when the subsoil becomes wet or dry and occurs near the upper surface of the soil. Compact granular soils such as gravel suffer very little movement whereas cohesive soils such as clay do suffer volume changes near the upper surface. Similar volume changes can occur due to water held in the subsoil freezing and expanding this is called frost heave. Thank you for viewing this video, if you like this video subscribe my channel Civil Engineering Basics, and share it to your friends.